Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and today I've got a long-term review for you. You know, I don't do too many of these, but I like watching them because they give you a good idea of how something's going to hold up over time, especially those budget items, right, where you're trying to save some money. How long are those things actually going to hold up and hang in there? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the Primary Arms 1-8 to with the ACSS reticle. Now, this long-term review is pretty much going to be the same for the 1-4 to and the 1-6 to because I own all three and they've all three held up pretty much identically. So uh, you can take this for what it's worth and apply it to you know all of the different magnification levels. But this is the one we're going to be taking a look at right now. Now this right here is an affordable optic. And when you're looking at something that's affordable, usually they work pretty good, but you gotta wonder how long they're gonna last. I originally reviewed this back in, I believe it was October of 2017. So I've had this for over three years now. I use it a lot. You guys have seen it probably in hundreds of videos by this point. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting result because I did not expect this out of something that comes in at a price point uh, like Primary Arms. And I'll have links to this stuff over at my website. You guys can check this out because Primary Arms is having a pretty good Christmas sale right now, which is gonna be bring the price of these down even lower and make it more affordable. And uh, again, three and a half years of at least weekly use uh, that I've gotten out of this. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. And we'll talk a little bit more about the wear and I'll show you guys some of the characteristics and kind of give it you know, a, a full review, but in terms of years, not months. Okay, so here's a closer look at our optic. Now, the first thing I want to point out is something very simple, and that is the anodizing of the body itself. So the body of the optic, not the caps or covers. It is virtually perfect. I mean, looking at it, I don't see any scratches. I don't see any heavy wear marks, nothing like that. And this thing has been in and out of my truck. It's been in the bed of my truck. It's been in rocks. It's been in dirt. It's been in and out of the safe hundreds of times uh, this thing has been all over the place and it's been used and the body of the scope itself looks perfect so they did a great job with the anodizing here the scope body itself almost looks like day one where i see the wear is going to be on the scope caps uh, the turret caps excuse me and covers and then for the battery compartment on that cover as well obviously these are going to be the extremities so these are going to be the things that bump into stuff the most and those just have i would say minor average minor wear on them. So just around the knurling for the battery cap right here, this is also gonna be the knob that adjusts your uh, brightness settings. And then uh, for our turret caps, top and then on the side as well. Now, on the side turret on the Primary Arms ACSS scopes, uh, they actually have a spare battery. So if we take this off, this, this side one is gonna be a little bit taller than the top cap. So you can see our top cap right there. Here's our side cap. You can see that this one right here is gonna be taller and that's because there's an extra CR2032 battery in there. And then again, we have our low pro profile turrets underneath. But uh, that's pretty much it. A little bit of wear where the anodizing has been rubbed off on the turret caps and covers. Now, in, in terms of glass, the glass is in perfect condition. Now, the glass is something that can be scratched. It can get damaged and that depends how you take care of it. When I got this thing originally, it had flip up caps. Um, I got rid of those flip up caps pretty quick because I just always knock them off and I don't use them all the time. But without those flip up caps on there, the glass has actually stayed pretty nice, uh, you know, which is a good sign because they do have a lot of coatings on there that are supposed to help with, you know, scratch resistance and dust resistance and stuff like that. And if the coating's not good, the glass will scratch much easier than a high quality glass. So I'm thinking that they have a pretty nice high quality glass on this thing. And you can kind of see right there, the glass is in, is in excellent condition. So as far as the exterior body of the scope goes and how the glass is hold, held up and how the coatings have held up on the glass, it's 100%. I'm really impressed with how tough this thing is, especially again, given its price point. You know, it's not a thousand dollars, it's not a two thousand dollar scope. This is a scope that comes in around 300 bucks, or I think even maybe less than 300 bucks. It depends on the magnification that you're looking at, but it comes around that price point, right? And so, for that price, for this to hold up that well, uh, it's pretty impressive. Everything's still nice and tight. Uh, I still get a good turn out of it. It hasn't come you know, loose over time to where it's just kind of spinning freely. It still has a pretty good amount of tension on it to where I can turn it, but it's not too free where it's gonna spin if I put it in a case with something else. So uh, exterior wise, this thing is in great shape. 
Now when it comes to scopes like this that have an illuminated reticle, that also means that there are going to be electronics inside and we all know that electronics can fail over time. They sort of wear out and give out and sometimes if you, you know, do too much with it, you know, put it under too much recoil or too much stress or drop it, those things can fail. And after three years, the electronics in the scope are still working perfect. I still get a nice illumination on the reticle. All of the brightness adjustments still work. The knobs still work. You know, everything still works as intended. Now, this doesn't have the best battery life in the world, which is kind of typical of an LPVO because they don't work with the same small LED emitter that you're going to find in a red dot. But for an LPVO on this one right here, I change out the battery. It kind of depends, but I change it out. Uh, between four and six months and again having that spare battery in this little compartment right here kind of makes it nicer because if it does go out and you're out in the middle of nowhere or you're at the range and you don't have an extra battery with you uh, you keep your battery right there so it kind of solves the problem and extends your battery life by allowing you to keep one in the scope here but still all the electronics on the inside work the ACSS reticle still looks as clear and as crisp as you're going to find again the nice thing about an LPVO versus let's say a red dot with an emitter is that even if you lose battery you still have that really nice reticle so I still have the black reticle even if the illumination goes out but uh, even you know regardless having the black reticle or not there's electronic components in here and after three years they're still going strong so in terms of longevity durability and reliability this thing gets a 10 out of 10 for me uh, it has worked pretty much exactly the same since day one and like I said the only noticeable difference from day one to now uh, is going to be a little bit of wear on the turret caps that's it other than that it is as I reviewed it three years ago. So that really makes your money count, right? So you're you're looking for something, you want something affordable, but you also want it to last because you don't want to have to, you know, replace it later on down the road. And you hear a lot of people say, buy once, cry once, right? Well, that that's true in some cases, but in some other cases, it's not necessarily true. You don't have to spend ridiculous amounts of money to get something that's good. And this, this optic sort of proves it right here because there'll be people that say, oh, why would you buy you know, something that comes in at that $300 price point when you could have you know, bought a Trijicon or something like that. And uh, I would have to say that, look, you, know, you have your Trijicon, you spent three, four, five times as much as I did on this right here. And this thing's still holding up just as good as I would expect the Trijicon would after the same amount of time. So again, it gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Now, when it comes to the, you know, the actual review of the optic and what I think about it, you know, this is one of my favorites and one of my favorites for a reason. One, it's got an amazing reticle in it. The ACSS is one of my favorite all-time reticles. It's very easy to use. It has uh, ballistic drop compensation in it. Uh, it's got, you know, a very easy to find reticle, so it's nice and fast. Uh, the ACSS reticle just hands down in all of its different versions. I haven't seen an ACSS reticle that I haven't liked yet, but this one right here is like the modified horseshoe. And it, in this version, I absolutely love it. And that's kind of what makes it one of my favorites. This is a second focal plane scope. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people over, you know, around the world right now that are converting to a first focal plane scope. They like something that has uh, the reticle that, you know, is adjustable and the reticle gets bigger in size as you go through your magnification. But what I like about the second focal planes, especially for an LPVO like this with this type of reticle is, if I'm dialed all the way back down to 1x, right? So no magnification whatsoever. That reticle is going to look exactly the same to me with ballistic drop compensation, right? However, you have to have it dialed up a little bit higher in order to use the proper holdovers that are going to be in that reticle. So there's a little bit of give and take, but still the reticle looks super nice and is very easy to use all the way through the magnification uh, settings, whether it's 1 to 4, 1 to 6, or 1 to 8. Also, this thing's really lightweight. Um, there's a lot of other options on the market. It seems like by making them thicker and heavier, they're trying to make them tougher and tougher, but uh, they also become heavier and heavier. And this is a fairly lightweight option. It has a 30 millimeter uh, tube on it, which makes it you know, easy to find different rings and mounts and stuff like that. Currently I have it set it up in a, you know, an inexpensive Vortex mount. It's nothing super fancy, but Vortex makes some really nice mounts. I've had it in warm, worn mounts. I've had it in UTG mounts. I've had it in, you know, some higher end mounts and the cheapest stuff that you can find. And I've, I've tried a lot of different mounts on this and it works just fine. The amount of light transparency that I get through this is really, really good. I'm gonna say it's definitely higher than 95%. So you get a lot of good light transmission through this. You get excellent color, very good clarity, uh, edge to edge. 
uh, clarity uh, as far as the glass goes when you're looking through it. There's no distortion around the edges where you might see some bowing or see the image start to distort as you look towards the edges. I don't get anything from that. The eye relief is good, about three and a half inches uh, of eye relief. You have an adjustable pupil on this thing. And, uh, you know, it's just a great LPVO. And I think that this is something that, you know, the average person can afford and the average person can get. You know, while we all like to have those really expensive scopes, you know, we all like to have those things and the big name brands and stuff. Uh, I would not hesitate to buy another one of these in an instant. You know, the only other one that I think is comparable to this that I think falls in the same price category that a to be honest with you, I, li I like more than this one right here, but I just don't have it for the long term quite yet. I'm at about a year, but that's going to be the uh, Swamp Fox Optics LPVOs, the Swamp Fox Optics Arrowhead. Uh, the Arrowhead is, to be honest with you, I think hands down the best LPVO you're going to find uh, in its price category, period. As a matter of fact, I think it rivals some of the more expensive stuff. R regardless, I, I think the Swamp Fox Optics and this one right here are going to be the, uh, the two that I would go with easily no problem so um I, I think it's definitely an option worth checking out and again after three years it's really hard to say that this isn't something that's worth every single dollar that you'd pay for it um this wasn't sent to me this is you know not something i'm getting paid for this is something that i'm doing on my own to show you guys because uh, again i think there's a lot of value in long-term reviews so definitely worth checking out if you're somebody who just bought one of these I think you made a good purchase if you're somebody who's looking at one and thinking about buying one i would definitely get it now, I know this isn't a super in-depth detailed review, so I'll put a link in the description box to my original review on this optic right here. Uh, the details and the specs haven't changed, so it's still just as relevant today as it was back then. So uh, you guys can check that out. And if you want more information, all you have to do is, again, check out my website. I have links, discount codes, all sorts of stuff. If you guys want to save some money, especially for the holidays, check that out. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.